You're a filmmaker, right? My most confident guess is you probably have a Cine camera or even a DSLR. And uh, you, of course, definitely have a lens. This is a still lens or even better, maybe a Cine lens. But what if we sent it a notch higher and get you even more professional and also give you that cinematic look to your films? Let's get right into it. All right, so we are talking about this bad boy or these bad boys, okay? I actually have a number of them and I'm gonna share with you the filters that I put on my lenses when I'm shooting any video project, filmmaking project, and it gives me that cinematic touch. I have five filters that I normally use on a day-to-day -day project, but I mostly have three of them stacked up in front of my lens and I'm gonna take you through all the five what I use them for, what they actually build for. And yeah, of course, recommend them to you because I've found out that my videos look a whole lot better ever since I grabbed these and I used them. So you'll probably be very interested in the end of the video. Do well to stay to the end. So I'm gonna talk about the filters from the least expensive to the most expensive out of the five that I have. And I'm, the first one I'm gonna talk about is the UV filter. The UV simply means ultraviolet rays or light from the sun. Other cameras were very, very sensitive to light and so it needed some bit of protection and so almost often than not, you're gonna have to have a UV filter in front of your lens to protect the image sensor from the UV rays, okay? But now we are blessed with cameras that are well coated and protected in terms of the image sensors, but you still will definitely want to have a UV filter in front of your lens. Basically because you need to protect your lens, first of all, because it serves as that's a cheap way to protect the front element of the glass of your lens. And of course, you need to protect your lens as well from the rain. So the UV filter can help you a lot. And ever since I bought it, I have had it right in front of my lens every time. I never take it off until, of course, this video. So you have to get a UV filter to protect your lens from weather conditions as well as the rays from the sun. The next filter I'm gonna talk about is a circular polarizer filter. What makes it very distinct from the UV filter is that you can actually regulate the look that it gives to your shot before you even take a picture of it. As you tune this part of the ring of the filter, it actually circulates like that and it changes the look. You can actually have a look at it on your LCD screen as you rotate the filter, okay? And a major instance that you may need a circular polarizer filter or even a polarizer filter, I'm saying circular because this one's in the circle, but filters comes in different shapes. You can even have the square ones or the you know rectangular ones depending on the matte box that you're using. So this goes directly onto my lens. And so because the lens is circular, it needs to be circular so you can screw it on, all right? So one major um, instance where you may need a circular polarizer filter is when you're shooting against something glossy, let's say the windshield or you're shooting um, video or even photography of fish under water. And you need to take away some glare off of the surface of the water and be able to go through and have a clear shot of what's under the water. To get rid of those reflections, a circular polarizer can help you to do that. And I don't find myself always using this because it gives me some bit of warmth that I don't normally, you know, dig. But of course, it helps you when, in instances, this is what I explained, when you need to get rid of reflections. Let's say you're shooting a film and the sun is hitting the windscreen of a vehicle. Let's say your actors are in there, you need to shoot through the windshield. The circular polarizer or the polarizer filter is gonna be your best bet. All right, the next filter that I own is the star effect filter. This can basically protect your lens, but it is actually given some kind of scars, or should I say some marks, that actually changes the look of the rays when they hit your lens. So let's say you're shooting against the sun or any source of light, as strong as it may be, or even as faint as it may be, depending on what this is designed to create the, um, the rays to become, this is actually a six star effect filter. And so what it does is, once there's a strong light that hits the surface of this filter in front of your lens, you're gonna have that look given to the sun rays and the look also appears in your shot, just like you can see in this instance where I was shooting a music video and I had the sun directly behind my subjects and so it created this wonderful look. It can be a very great tool when you want some effects that you don't want to actually get it during, I um, mean, post-production, but you want to actually get it on set. This is something you can look into, but it also comes in different, um, sizes as well as the 
max over there where you can go for even a four star five star even some goals as high as eight stars you know depending on the effect that you're looking for you can go for it and i'm going to link down in the description below where you can find these filters in fact all the filters i'm going to talk about today um you're going to find them there i'm going to show you some links that you can hit them so check down there and of course after the video you go purchase them if you want <laughs> the second expensive filter that i own is this uv filter which is actually from k and f concept all right so i've had this filter for quite some time and most often i notice in front of my lens it gives a warm look to the shot that i take and uh, most often than not i'll keep it as it is but you see one very important reason why you may need an nd filter is that if you set all your settings and you don't want to alter for instance or most importantly your aperture this can also help you to regulate how much light you admit into your camera. This, as you can see in this B-roll, notice that as I tune the ring of the filter, it gives me a lot of stops across all the way. My ND filter gives me five stops, which is quite enough, but may not be enough in some instances. So you can go for those that have more stops. And of course, that's also going to be a determinant of the price. It's going to definitely be costly than this one. But this is actually what I have, and it works perfectly well for what I need it to. So if you are looking at something to protect your glass, that's your lens, first of all, and also to help you regulate your settings without touching actually the settings of your camera maybe you don't want to go below or beyond that you can use this to regulate that as you still have your settings intact so an nd filter is definitely a must buy you need to get this and it can help you a whole lot of times in such instances where you need to quickly tune or change your exposure now the last but not the least most expensive filter that i have in my five stack filter set is the tiffin black promise filter this is the most expensive because the effect that this gives and of course the brand that made this is of premium quality and of course it's definitely going to be costly and um i need to protect this as much as i can so i always have the uv filter right in front of this one and uh, of course the nd filter attached to the front so it actually becomes the main filter right in front of the stack okay so um basically what this does is that it blooms the highlights especially if you're shooting towards the sun or you want to soften the skin tones not necessarily the tones in terms of color but particularly if there are blemishes or there are some harsh contrast this actually blooms the highlights and it smears and it makes it look smooth and it gives you that you know vintage retro feel that look that you normally see in the 80s and the 70s in terms of the films that were produced it actually gives you that look and these actually come in different strengths what I have is um, the 1 over 4 which is decently strong it gives me that nice bloomed effect and it smears and it looks quite good on the skins of my subjects particularly when I'm shooting models and I need to have a toned down or soft look the 1 over 4 strength is just ideal you can opt to go for the 1 over 8 if the strength of the 1 over 4 is too strong for you there are a lot of companies that make knockoffs of what Tiffin does and I'm going to say that because I've had an experience with one filter that I got that claimed to have the same strength of the um, this particular black promise filter I have but it gave me that fuzzy look and it didn't really look as I would expect it to be of course I didn't have enough to pay for what this was worth but um, I decided to go with that knockoff to see if it's still going to give me that look it did a little bit but I could notice that it wasn't looking professional enough and I didn't really dig the look because I had already fallen in love with the Tiffin and I uh, just needed one to get by and see how it looked like. But until I got this, then I realized that I was really missing out on the real look. So I will recommend the Tiffin Black Promise Filter 1 over 4 if you want a smaller strength or a subtle strength, 1 over 8 will do. And it goes even as strong as even 1. Trust me, it can be 4. <laughs> and that means that I'm going to get a lot of blooming effect and that may not be an ideal solution for your films if you want to soften the skin and to reduce the blemishes of your subjects i have a video of um, how you can soften skin i'm going to link it down in the description below so you can check it out or 
I'm going to leave it up there so that you can, of course, <laughs> it's going to be here. So you can check it out and, you know, find a solution for yourself. If you're going to go for a subtle strength, like one over four, one over eight, and you still want to smooth out the skin because I wouldn't really recommend the one over two because it's too much, especially when you're shooting against the sun, it's going to give you too much haze and you might not like it. But one over four is quite ideal for me. And I keep this on my lens almost every time I am shooting video. But when I'm shooting pictures, it doesn't really work out for me unless probably I'm going to go for a vintage look, which I haven't actually wanted to go for. <laughs> so basically get this one. And this is the most expensive out of all the filters, I have to say again. And um, it's actually worth it because amongst all the lenses that I have, um, this particular filter gives me that look across all board. All right. I have some cine lenses over here and um, I've tried this on it. This particular cine lens is not of the same diameter as my um, my still lens the 18 to 35 Sigma art uh, 1.8 that I use normally on my camera that's actually what I have presently on my camera right now shooting me and um, because they have different um, diameters I'm gonna have to have a solution instead of going out there and buying all ring sizes or all filter sizes of filters for all the lenses that I own so there's a solution and um, that's basically something that we call step up rings and step down rings. And these are so, so much worth it. You need to get these because not only does it help you to fit a filter that is not of the same uh, filter size of your lens, but it also helps you to stack more filters of different variety because what I bought came as a pack and it gave me a variety of filter thread sizes and i'm going to link it down in the description as well so you can check it out and go buy it for yourself if you are thinking about buying the filters and of course as you grow you're going to definitely be exposed to different lenses and you don't have to always go and buy filters that will fit for each lens that you definitely buy in the future but having these step up rings and step down rings you can step up and step down depending on diameter that you have as your lens filter size so in general these filters have actually uplifted the look of my films ever since i got them i haven't ever thought of going back <laughs> anytime i'm shooting any video production i need to have of course, my Black Promise filter, my UV filter, as well as my ND filter, which is the powerful trio that I always stack up on my lens. And I'm pretty sure that you love the looks that these filters gave to my videos as they roll by. And uh, of course, if you're interested in them, once again, I have them down in the description below with their links. Check them out and of course, read more into the filters and understand why you're buying what over what, because I'm going to have a dedicated video for filters where I'm going to go through any kind of filter that I'm thinking about buying in the future, as well as those that I may be buying very soon. So yeah, until the next video, I'm going to catch you later. This has been Kobe Shots. Thank you very much for checking out this video. And until the next video, I'm going to catch you later. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the post notification button, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. See ya.